Okay, so today we are going to talk about something that is to do with consuming books that holds a very special place in my heart. Today I am going to be talking to you about why I love graphic audio. Now, I'm sure that there are a lot of people out there who have just clicked on this video having no idea what graphic audio is and there's a whole myriad of things going through your mind. Don't worry, I'm going to explain exactly what graphic audio is to you and then once I've explained that to you then we will move on to why I love it so much. It is very important that I make this statement right here, right now. This video is not sponsored by Graphic Audio. I, while I am a member with Graphic Audio, I am not being paid for this video. I have not been told or asked by them to do this video. I'm just doing it because I love it so much and I want to talk to you guys about it. So, let's get right into why I love graphic audio. So first of all, I just want to tell you guys a little bit about what graphic audio is about and how I came to find it. My very first experience with graphic audio came with my second favorite book of the year, Miss Bourne, The Final Empire. So I was reading not this edition, but yes, this book, uh, way back in February, actually. I started reading it physically and I was struggling. I know, I kind of even laugh at that myself now, thinking I struggle with Brandon Sanderson's writing, but anyway, I did back then. So I decided I wanted to listen to an audio version of this book and I went looking online and I found a an audio version of this book online. Don't hate me, okay? I didn't know the deals that audio book companies have with authors. I'm very different now. I'm extremely conscious of that now when I pay for every audio book that I listen to these days. But back then I did not know about that. I found a free copy of Miss Born the Final Empire somewhere online and so I was listening to that. Then when the audio book began, I was very surprised because it opened up with a guy saying the words Graphic Audio A movie in your mind And I was like, wait, what? What, what, what? Graphic? How graphic is this book? And I'm sure that if you haven't heard of graphic audio, you're thinking the same thing. Graphic? Oh my god, what's graphic about me as a porn? But it's not graphic in that sense. I started listening to the audiobook and I fell in love with graphic audio in like two seconds. And oh my gosh, I have since used graphic audio for every, almost every single cause me a book that I've ever read. So the only exception is this one, Shadows of Self, which is book two in the second era of Mistborn. I listened to this on Audible and it was a, well, I'm going to have to say it was a bummer. It really was. So now time to talk about what graphic audio is for those of you who don't know. I think the best way to describe graphic audio is by going off of their own tagline, graphic audio, a movie in your mind. That is exactly what graphic audio is. Imagine that you have a copy of a movie that you have purchased and this movie has everything that you would normally get with the movie with the exception of the visual. You're getting everything else. You are getting the the uh, the audio of the actors who are playing these roles and you're hearing their lines. You're also hearing music that's going on in the background to set the, mu the mood. You're also hearing sound effects of certain things that are going on. Whether you're getting major sound effects like a sword-on-sword -sword action if it's a fantasy. Strikes made with precision, a moment of glimness with a weapon. He forgot his worries, forgot his failures, forgot even his rage. Just Kaladin and a spear as the world was meant to be. Yeah. Or minor sound effects such as if people are walking through gravel and you're hearing the crunching of them walking through that gravel. Down and charged to the opening. Behind the officer. 
This is basically graphic audio. It is every single thing you would get from a movie just without the visual. And oh my gosh, it definitely makes a very big difference listening to an audiobook alongside a physical book when that audiobook is graphic audio compared to if that audiobook is your standard audiobook on Audible. So I want to talk to you guys about how I came across the website. So I listened to, as I said, yeah, Mistborn, The Final Empire on that website. Then I listened to, uh, I won't hold it up, but The Well of Ascension, the second book in this series on that same website. Then I found the actual website, graphic audio, I believe, .net is, is the, the link will be in the description anyway. And I checked them out and they're pretty amazing. So I'm just going to talk a little bit more about my appreciation of graphic audio and how it just, it does so much for me. Graphic audio has spoiled me. I was thinking a little bit last night about, you know, what I was going to say, and I was thinking that graphic audio has spoiled me for other audiobooks. So if you've never experienced graphic audio before, but you've listened to an audiobook, particularly if you've listened to it, for example, like on Audible, with your standard typical audiobooks, you have a single with your standard ones. You have a single narrator who will basically just talk. You have one um, audio narrator that does everything, whether there are one, two, three, ten, twenty characters in a book, that one uh, audio narrator will be voicing everything that goes along. What they might do is they might uh, lower their voice or heighten their voice. So say they're doing a normal voice for your protagonist and saying, hi there, my name is John. And then John meets a boy whose name is... Tom, and so then they'll go lower. Hi, uh, John, my name is Tom, and then they'll meet Sandy. Hi, my name is Sandy, and they literally will just lower and raise their voice, which I appreciate because you get a distinct difference with the characters, but it's all the same audio narrator. Not with graphic audio. With graphic audio, they have hired someone to do the narration uh, voice. They've hired actors to do to play the different roles. So it's literally different people that you are experiencing. But also, as I mentioned earlier, the sound effects. But all of Brandon Sanderson's Cosmic books that I've read so far, they all involve a battle of some kind at some point in every book. And whether that battle is sword-on-sword combat or using powers to be in combat with each other, hearing the sound effect of that makes a very big difference. So if they are using swords, you get the clang, clang, clang of the swords hitting each other while they are going through this war. You hear the, uh, the not the screams, but the grunts of the the people while they're grunting and you know, the uh, and the clang and the everything, you get everything. And then if someone gets stabbed, you get that slicing sound effect of them actually getting stabbed and you get everything and it's so good. And it's not just that you get, um, if it's a full on war, you don't just get two people clanging swords, you get like a hundred people, what it sounds like in the background, also doing the same thing, making the story feels so much more epic than your standard audible narration where you're just having one person that's reading John drew his sword and started fighting Tim. It was a really good battle. Eventually Tom stabbed Tim. In graphic audio you would get Tom drew his sword, shring, <laughs> and then went into an epic battle with Tim. Clang, 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 clang. Then he hit Tim. Shroom. You get that sh- that um, sound effect of the sword going in. Shroom. Oh, and then Tim died. Ugh. You know, you get the whole thing. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> I could go on for ages. But what I want to do now is move into another section of this video where I talk about how I miss graphic audio when it's not there. So we're going to jump over to how I feel a little bit let down with certain audiobooks 
because I'm not listening to the graphic audio version. Let's go over there right now. I want to talk to you guys about The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. So this is a book that I tried to read physically and I struggled because there is a language barrier. Evan Winter has set this world in Africa and there are many times throughout multiple pages where there are African, the language of uh, Africans, Afrikaans terminology littered throughout the book which made it very hard for me to read i've spoken to people about this on the discord and it makes me very happy because i'm not alone with this so <laughs> yeah um for those of you who were wondering about fires of vengeance because i didn't get to read that last time there are a whole bunch of us over at the murphy napier uh buddy read books that are going to be reading fires of vengeance together once the audio becomes available so i'm very happy about that with this book, aside from there being language barriers, as you can see, there are a ton of swords and instruments uh, around the coat of arms there, and that's because there's a lot of fighting that goes on throughout this book. Some of it is friendly, some of it is full-on war, but you know what it was missing? This, when I was listening to the audiobook on Audible, the magic of graphic audio. Because, as I was saying earlier, in this book you get the... Um, Ty drew his sword, oh it's Tao, not Ty, but anyway, we'll just say Ty, and I'm making this up, I'm not pulling directly from the book because I don't want to have spoilers, so Ty drew his sword and thrust it at Malcolm, and then Malcolm hit back, and suddenly they were in a very big battle between each other, and already this is just one person talking, and hopefully you're seeing it in your mind, but it's very one-dimensional. Had this been going through graphic audio, Ty drew his sword, shring, and they started battling, ching, 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 ching. Oh my gosh. I am not doing, um, I'm not doing graphic audio justice. And you can go to the website. They have samples at the website. So uh, graphicaudio.net, absolutely free samples of all of the books that they have. Find a Brandon Sanderson book, click on a sample and listen to it so that you know what I mean, rather than thinking they literally have someone going cling, 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 because they don't. It's the actual sound effect. Um, and it sounds, oh my gosh, it's so good. <laughs> I almost at one point thought that I had found a graphic audio for The Lies of Locke Lamora, which is a book that I DNF'd a little earlier this year. And if I find this again, I wouldn't mind rereading The Lives of Locke Lamora with this graphic audio. I believe they call it like a radio drama or something like that version of this would be really good. If you know of the radio drama version of this, please let me know in the comments below. I might give it another go. But anyway, I miss graphic audio a lot when I'm listening to another audio book that involves any sort of battle because it's just... Not the same having someone read to me and then he drew his sword and then they started fighting and Ty was doing very well until Malcolm stabbed him and then he started bleeding. It's so monotone. <laughs> Shout out to Neil Gaiman for trying to hit me. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, because it sounds very monotone. So I've been very spoiled by graphic audio. So now I want to talk about the one and only con with graphic audio because I could talk all day about how much I love it. I could talk all day about I'm actually rereading Miss Warren the Final Empire at the end of this month and you best believe I'm gonna be listening to it on graphic audio. I've listened to, because I said all, all of them except for Shutters of Self, all of the Cosmere books I listen to on graphic audio, I listened to The Way of Kings, Words, Radiance and Oathbringer uh, finished Oathbringer only yesterday, so there you go, I was listening to it even yesterday, uh, through Graphic Audio. The Way of Kings book is already out, but Graphic Audio have made a statement, and I'll put it right there, that uh, Rhythm of War is not going, the full set, the entire book, is not going to come out uh, until the end of next year, and because of that, I am willing to wait. So I'm willing to wait for, for Graphic Audio to have Rhythm of War available before I start reading Rhythm of War. The one con for Graphic Audio is that it is more expensive than your standard audio book, and so you might need to keep that in mind, especially if you are budgeting with audio books or if, you know, it might be too expensive for you, so do please keep that in mind. Now, one good thing about graphic audio is that, unlike with Audible, if we look at Oathbringer, because this was my most recent read, I'll refer to Oathbringer, 
there are six parts to Oathbringer with the graphic audio version, and each of the six parts goes for roughly seven hours, which means 42, yeah, 42 hours in total, if my math serves correctly. Uh, with graphic audio, you can purchase each part on its own, so you can just purchase part one um, for, I, oh, I do not remember the price, I would say it's between 15 and $20, which, again, is a, uh, is a very fair reason to consider whether or not this is too expensive for you. Seven hours of a graphic audio book where you have everything in that book except for the visual. You get the audio narrator, which you would in Audible, but you also get all the other members of the cast, all the other voice actors, all the minor sound effects, all the major sound effects, all the mood setting music, which is different on top of that. So we might have, uh, if, if you know your music terminology, say for example, when it comes with to piano or whatever, you might have minor music or major music for certain uh, points of the book to affect how everyone's feeling about that moment. You can, if you want to just purchase, say for example, part one, if it was Oathbringer, Oathbringer, um, which is Stormlight Archives Book 3, Oathbringer Part 1 of 6, for, I think it's like $15, $16. Purchase that and listen to the 7 hours of that, and then if you like that, you can part purchase Book Number 2. I 1,000% trust Graphic Audio, so for me, I know that if I'm going to read a book from the Cosmere world, that I want to have Graphic Audio on site, and so for me, I will go ahead and purchase the entire set of that book. So when I was listening to Oathbringer, I purchased the Oathbringer set, which was parts one, two, three, four, five, and six. And I had them all on me at once just for the sake of convenience. And it didn't let me down. Graphic audio, they're absolutely amazing. But the one con I get again reiterate is the price. It is not as cheap as Audible, so you do need to keep that in mind. But I also want you to keep in mind the work that goes on behind the scenes. I'm not at, in any way trying to belittle the work that goes on behind the scenes for audible narrators. Not at all. I have a attempted to uh, audibly narrate books myself in a very amateur way to help some uh, people that I was reading the book for. And that was an interesting process, and it was nowhere near the quality that is expected of Audible. So I understand that Audible narrators go through a lot, not only in uh, filming their audio narration, but also the amount of editing they do behind the scenes. One of my favourite booktubers used to be an Audible narrator, and she was talking about the things she had to do. I get that it's not easy, I understand that. But graphic audio they do so much more than your standard Audible narrator does that you need to keep that in mind. You're not just paying for one person to narrate an audiobook for you. You are paying for all the different actors that they have hired. You're paying for the minor sound effects, the major sound effects, the minor music, the major scale music. You're paying for all of this stuff put together, and when you listen to, especially, you can download, uh, so there is an app that goes alongside the website, so you go to the website, which I'm giving you in the link below, and then you download the app to your phone, and then what happens is once you purchase the, what you want to purchase from the website, it ends up on your phone, I would show you, but I'm using my phone to record right now, but it then goes onto your phone, and it becomes like Audible in that you then go ahead and download the part that you want to listen to, and then you can just listen to it directly from your phone. You can stream as well, but the good news about downloading a, an audiobook to your phone, no matter what it is, is that you can go anywhere with it, you don't need internet access. But my advice too is going to be this, go to the website in the, in the link in the description if any of this interests you. Go to the website and check out the sample. It's not going to cost you anything to do that, and that will give you an impression of how it goes. You can download in high quality or low quality, I've done both. Sometimes I see a difference, sometimes I don't. It really depends on the on the, the book itself that I'm listening to. 
but I would recommend downloading high quality because high quality is always better. I've never been someone to download high quality with a visual, but with an audio, yes, I am. There you go. That is where I'm going to leave it because this has gone on for far too long already. If any of this at all has intrigued you enough and made you think, oh, this sounds like something that I wouldn't mind just doing some research on, click on the link in the description below, check out the samples that they have. And if that interests you, then you can certainly consider purchasing a part or an entire box set of a story from Graphic Audio and let me know how you go. I love them and I think you will too. Thank you so, so, so much for watching. I post videos every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday and Sunday for now and I'll see you again soon. Mwah! Happy reading! <laughs>